Bernie Sanders brought up some little-known U.S. history at the Democratic debate last night. Let's watch. But this is nothing new. This has gone on 50 or 60 years where the United States has been involved in overthrowing governments. Mozadek back in 1953. Nobody knows who Mozadek was. Democratically elected prime minister of Iran. He was overthrown by British and American interest because he threatened oil interest of the British. And as a result of that, the Shah of Iran came in, terrible dictator. As a result of that, you had the Iranian revolution coming in, and that's where we are today. Unintended consequences. So I believe, as president, I will look very carefully about unintended consequences. I will do everything I can to make certain that the United States and our brave men and women in the military do not get bogged down in perpetual warfare in the Middle East. If, if I could just respond. It's an obscure thing that not many people know about, but it's true, and it doesn't really paint America in a very rosy picture. And this is the Bernie effect, man. This is Bernie's come in here and, he, and he's kind of thrown out the rule book. And he said, I, I know you're not supposed to talk about money in politics when you're running for president. I'm going to almost only talk about money in politics. He talks about all the other issues, of course, but he hammers away on the issue of money in politics. And then now it's this stuff, too. Like, oh, yeah, and while I'm at it, here's a little bit about the history of U.S. imperialism. Take a little bit of that while we're at it here. Dash of that. It's incredible. It's incredible. I, I would have never thought that we would have saw a candidate who was this open and honest about all this stuff. Maybe in my lifetime. I don't know. But he's right that not many people know about this, but I want to go ahead and give you guys some more information about U.S. interventions post-World War II. So we were, you know, fairly militaristic before then as well, but post-World War II was kind of when we inherited this uh, world policeman role and the things that we've done since then it, the Americans are just ignorant on and I think that if they know what we've done they would agree with me and think what what's going on here what a waste of tax dollars and how immoral is this and let's just not fuck with anybody unless they fuck with us first let's only fight in self-defense so here's some of the interventions that we've done since World War II China Korea Guatemala Indonesia, the Congo, Dominican Republic, Laos, Vietnam, Cambodia, Lebanon, Grenada, Libya, El Salvador, Nicaragua, Iran, Panama, Iraq, Kuwait, Somalia, Bosnia, Sudan, Afghanistan, Yugoslavia, Serbia, Syria, Pakistan, and Yemen. Okay, and that's just a partial list. Now, as I always say when I bring these up, can you point to some of these and say, yeah, look, perhaps that was a good one and that one was a good one? Sure. I'm not saying literally every one of them was bad, but are you saying literally every one of them was good and necessary? No, no, no. Make no mistake about it. A lot of what goes into deciding where we intervene and where we drop bombs and stuff is selfishness, greed, power, where you have corporations that, for example... Uh, want to exploit natural resources. The classic example is, is the Banana Wars, which happened well before World War II, where we had, uh, we overthrew South American countries and overthrew their governments because we just wanted to t steal the bananas because our banana corporations wanted it. This is the, the history of the U.S. that the establishment doesn't want you to know about, that they've been kind of standard imperialists for a very, very long time. And then when people make the argument like, oh, why do they hate us? Just because they're bad. That, just because they're bad. What? <laughs> no, like, are there some people who are just bad? Sure. Jihadists, just bad. There are ideologies that are just bad. But is the, everybody that hates America, are they by definition a bad guy and they're a terrorist or this or that? No, a lot of people dislike us for legitimate reasons. When you drop drone strikes and, and kill grandmas and, and brothers and sisters, kids... When you do sanctions that starve millions of people to death. And this is what we're trying to expose here. Not to bash America and say, bad, bad. But to say, hey, let's fix the system and not do this moving forward. Let's be responsible for the crimes of our government and prevent it from doing more. And that's what Bernie's doing here. He's like, look, in, we went to Iran, 1953, overthrew the government because we wanted to keep taking the oil, put the Shah into power. And then eventually, as a result, possibly one of the consequences of doing this is 
You gave the Shah total control, and then over time, there was this rebellion that arose up, and guess where people were able to meet to plan against the Shah, because it was one of the safest places to meet in Iran at the time. Mosques. So what kind of a revolution was it? It was a far right-wing theocratic revolution that took over and overthrew the Shah. Perhaps if we didn't overthrow Mossadegh, would, would this not have happened? Would it not have unfolded like that? Yeah, there, there's an argument to be made for that, okay? So you have to understand history, and we also supported dictators. This is another thing that Bernie's brought up in other contexts. Diaz, Gomez, Cabrera, Batista, Trujillo, Banzer, Duvalier, Pinochet, Ziem, Marcos, Suharto, Saddam Hussein. We supported him at the height of his atrocities against the Kurds, and then later we turn around when he's not listening to us anymore, and we go, Oh my God, look at what he did to the Kurds. <laughs> With our support, assholes! Uh, Mobutu, the House of Saud, Ceausescu, and the list goes on and on of all the dictators we support. As we tell the world we're supporting democracy, what we do is we go in and literally overthrow democratic regimes and put in fascist dictators. So, bottom line is, Bernie's right. I mean, to say, hey, regime change should rarely even be an option. Yeah. What business is it of ours? And the only time we should use the U.S. military is for self-defense, if somebody's about to attack us. Don't get me wrong, I'm not a pacifist. If there's a genocide going on somewhere, am I okay with the U.S. along with the U.N. doing what needs to be done to prevent a genocide? Sure! But you can't just have the U.S. go all around the world and do all these things, because they're not going to act in a purely humanitarian way. They're not going to act in an altruistic way. They're going to act out of selfishness and greed and, and care for power and more land and resources, like everybody else, when they get that power. It's like the old cliche, absolute power corrupts absolutely. We're not this benevolent angel that's shown upon the universe here. We've done fucked up things too, and oftentimes we continue to do fucked up things. And all Bernie's saying is, let's acknowledge that so we don't make these mistakes in the future. A radical idea.